Okay, well, it's seven o'clock my time, so I'm gonna get started. Um, whoops. So, hi everyone. Welcome to my Unity game development stream. My name is Taryn, and I started learning Unity about uh, just over a year ago. Um, and um, it was my first introduction to object-oriented programming. If you didn't know, Unity uses C Sharp, um, as well as a lot of um, GUI interface tools. Um, and um, yeah, so what I'm working on in the stream is a game that I made as part of a game jam back in the spring. It was the Game Dev TV game jam. Um, I think I have it up for you. Yeah. So it is um, a game, sort of a 2D game, sort of in the style of Minesweeper. Um, basically, it's really hard to see because I'm in the midst of uh, changing things. But basically, you have dirt piles that as the player you have to click on and you have to get all of the good dirt piles or all of the good graves before the timer runs out. And if you get too many bad graves, then you lose. Um, so it was my one of my first times working with procedural generation so I wanted to make sure that each time the player um, I'm gonna turn down the music just a little bit here hopefully that's a little bit better um, as always if you have if there's anything weird um, uh, if the audio is weird or if the video screws up um, please let me know in the comments I did have some issues last time with the stream cutting out, um, although last time I think it was um, sort of poor weather, so I think my internet was going in and out, but okay, so that's a good level. But yeah, please let me know. I'm still quite new to streaming, so um, 
yeah, please let me know. Um, yeah, so this game that I'm working on, um, it was one of my first times working with procedural generation. I wanted each time the player um, opens the game to have a different experience. So basically the position of the good and the bad graves, um, I wanted it to change so it wasn't too boring for the player. Um, but I didn't end up expanding on the game a bunch and that's what I want to do in the stream is taking that concept and running with it and making um, a longer game and a more um, immersive game for the player. Um, I will warn you that a lot of the stream is me sort of playing around and um, just sort of seeing what I can do with the code, not necessarily moving from point A to point B as quickly as I possibly can. Um, I also am sort of using this stream as a learning tool and as a chance to get to play around a little bit. Um, I do, um, for a day job, I do uh, freelance work in Unity and there it's a lot more uh, structured where I have, I'm, you know, I'm working on a deadline so I have to do things as quickly and efficiently as possible. So I use this stream to just get to like relax and play around and see what I can do. Um, so I, again, I might not be doing things the most efficiently. Um, I really like that aspect of coding that there are several ways um, in most cases, there are several ways to um, complete an objective um, with different types of code. So I like playing around with that essentially and um, seeing which one I like best. Um, I like to refactor a lot too. Um, I haven't done a lot of refactoring on the stream yet, but it's something I like to do is just try to like keep making my code as efficient as possible. Um, I'm definitely not an advanced Unity user. I would say I'm um, sort of on the low end of intermediate, so I still have lots to learn, um, but hopefully some of you who are here are also interested in learning Unity, um, game development in general, um, and so hopefully you will learn something from this stream as well. So with all of that being said, I think I'm going to get started. Um, oh, one last thing I want to mention, because Unity takes up a lot of space on the screen, um, I have my Unity in one window and my Visual Studio, which is what I use for coding, in another window. Um, so I have to be sort of um, hotkeying between them back and forth. Um, so if I'm ever on one screen and talking a whole bunch about code um, and I've forgotten to go back over to Visual Studio, please drop me a comment so that way I know to go back over. I try to remember as much as I can um, to swap back and forth between them, but I don't always um, get there right away. Okay, um, I'm also, it's the end of the weekends. Uh, it's been a pretty chaotic weekend for me, so I'm a little bit on the tired side. Um, so I might not be as sharp tonight, but that's okay. You're not always as sharp as you want to be when you're programming, when you're working in general. Um, I think it's good practice to continue working um, when you're not like, you know, when you can't do top performance because that's um, a good skill to have, right? You're never going to feel your best every day of the week. Okay, so um, I only am working on this game on the stream. Um, so I haven't reopened this game since my last stream, which was Tuesday and, um, except for just about 10 minutes before the stream and, um, I opened it up and I pressed play and I hope you can see this. My game is completely black. Um, I think I know what's wrong, but I'm not sure, but I just wanted to demonstrate this because this is a fairly common occurrence in Unity where, um, or just honestly coding in general, where you feel like, yeah, you got somewhere, you feel good about it, you leave, you come back, and suddenly you have a bunch of error codes or there's an unexpected behavior. Um, don't freak out, this is normal, uh, but it does mean that we're gonna have to right off the bat fix some things. Um, my first thought was that um, my camera was not in the right position. So if you were on my last stream, you might remember that I was working with the camera and having the camera sort of zoom around the play space. 
Um, and I was having um, a similar behavior appear on the screen. And what the problem actually was is that um, the camera should be sitting. Again, I want to make sure you can see this. You can't always see when I'm um, opening, up, uh, opening up windows in Unity. So I'll try to sort of narrate some of what I'm doing as well. Um, but over here in the inspector, I have the main camera selected. Um, I believe this is by default that in Unity 2D, the Z um, axis position is at minus 10. I believe that's the default setting. Um, but what was happening last stream is that because I have an array of different camera positions, programs, as the camera was zooming around to those different positions, um, it wasn't uh, manipulating the z-axis and that's because I was mistakenly using uh, a vector two instead of a vector three. So I was ma manipulating the x and the y-axis but then leaving out that z-axis. So it was always remaining at zero, um, which was not good. So I can see though that the camera, and let's just make sure that that behavior stays consistent when I press play and it does, yep. So it is still at minus 10, so I don't think it's the camera. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is go into my console, which is at the bottom of the screen, and you'll see I do have some error messages here. And this sort of tipped me off because I remembered at the very tail end of my last stream, I had sort of concocted this um, spawning <laughs> uh, switch statement that I was going to try to use. So I think probably what's happening here is because I haven't addressed these error messages yet. It is screwing up um, the canvases and not having them spawn properly um, or not having them render properly. The canvases themselves are not spawning. They're just rendering. Um, so in my last stream, um, okay, so basically let me just sort of think through this because again, this is the first time I've looked at this in almost a week as well. So basically, I the original game was just this one play space here, um, which was 1920 by 1080, and I've um, quadrupled that so that there are now four game spaces. So what I want to have happen is that the camera starts on this space, zoom. Um, once you complete the space, it zooms up to this space. Once you complete the space, zooms over, and then complete the space, zooms down. Um, I think what will end up make, being or making the most sense is having a spawner that spawns all of the graves. So all of these white squares are going to be graves. Um, they're not gonna be white, actually. They're white right now so that I can see where they are um, on the canvas. Um, but I think it'll make the most sense to have one script uh, generate, um, like procedurally generate the entire game space. However, last stream, I got it in my head that I wanted to try a switch statement um, that uh, would individually generate the different um, play spaces. Um, this honestly probably isn't something I'm gonna end up using, but I thought, I don't know, it might be fun to try to see if I could do that. Um, so I can already see as I'm talking through this that there's gonna be a problem with how I'm doing this because, um, and you know what, before I do anything else, I'm gonna bring my UI canvas back up. Okay, so there's my UI canvas, and I have, I currently have the four, um, four play spaces, so because what I had done is just taken um, the original canvas and then just continue to duplicate it, I had four UI canvases um, so that's not what I want to do. I just want to have one. I'm also thinking, yeah, okay. Let's position the UI canvas where I want it to go because when I generate the graves, I want to make sure that the grave spawner can communicate with the UI bar properly because if it can't, then this whole thing is just like moot. It needs to, this is where, um, the information for the player will be like how many graves are left how many charges of the lantern um i have left and if you haven't watched the stream before the lantern is a mechanic where when you hit this little light button that says light here this little lantern like lights up and does a funky little dance and it shows you which graves are good and which graves are bad just for like a second 
Um, so that way you have like a bit of a chance. It's not an, it's not just based on luck. You're not just like arbitrarily clicking on graves. Um, so there like is a bit of strategy involved. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep that mechanic as it stands. Um, but that's what's in the game right now. So I'm going to put this, um, this UI canvas back in. And I think what I want to do in that case is I almost want to have, let me just see here. Cause I think what I'd like to do is have some empty dirt, um, in between the two play spaces. Whoops. So that way there's a place for the UI canvas to go or the UI bar to go. So what am I? Okay. That's the fader that I'm currently moving. So that's just a big, um, image that I have that starts, um, invisible and it has an animation on it that basically goes to black and then it comes back out. So there's like a fade out and then a fade in animation, which is triggered through code. Um, and theoretically it should be covering the entire play space. Um, but you'll see as I'm, it's not like my top priority, so it might sort of get thrown around a bit. Um, so you might see like parts of the screen fading out and not others. Um, what I really want to get a hold of is this, the big play space that's still, okay. So I'm going to just increase this dirt even more and um, the scale of this is icky right now. Um, I'm going to need different graphics. Um, I'm going to need the graphics redone. That's what I want to have happen um, because they're not meant to be the graphics that I have right now. The pixel art graphics are not meant to be stretched in this way. Um, but it's what I have to work with right now. So I'm just going to use them for now. Okay. So now I need to have, so that's okay. So this is my first canvas and I move that up here and the graves are sort of all smushed together. So once again, the white squares are the graves right now. They're all smushed together. Um, I haven't really worried much about positioning right now because it doesn't matter and I don't, I don't want to spend a whole bunch of time on that. I'm going to move my camera up as well to about there and I just make sure that my, um, so I have four positions, camera positions that are programs. Um, and I want to make sure that I'm updating those. So my, my camera script, says um, when the game starts to immediately uh, push the camera over to position number one. So I wanna make sure that I've defined position number one properly. It's like that it's being reflected properly. Okay, so I'm gonna move this up. This is bothering me that I've called this UI canvas. I'm gonna call this UI bar. Um, I don't even know if it has a canvas property on it. So I don't know. I'm like pretty specific <laughs> with what I name my objects. Yeah. I still feel like let's move the graves down a little bit. They're going to look different when they're actually graves and not just, um, white squares. Yeah, like that might be okay. I still, I feel like my bar too needs to just maybe be a little bit smaller. It's just sort of overwhelming right now. And I'm almost thinking that needs to go all the way across the screen. Um, right now it's just sort of like centered in the middle of the screen there. So that I think looks a little bit better. Definitely not centered. 
I'm not super happy with their grave positions, but it's okay. And now I'm wondering what's gonna happen if I play the game, nothing's gonna render correctly. Okay, and you know what? That's not even working. And that is, that does make me think that maybe it's the camera. Um, okay, I'm gonna go over into Visual Studio here, if I can get over there. Okay, so I've concocted this way overly complicated switch statement um, because what was happening last time is that I, um, okay, so initially how I had it was that um, there was a serialized array that contained all of the dirt piles because initially there were only something like I don't know, maybe like 20 or so dirt piles, probably a little more, but let's just say 20. Um, and so I had to pull all of, I had an array, I think it was a game object array, and I had to pull individually all of the um, white squares where I wanted the graves to spawn. I had to pull them all into the array. The problem with that is that when I want to change the positioning or I want to like add graves, um, it was a big pain because I'd have to go back in and re-add them to the array. So I wanted to, um, rather than rely on a serialized field to generate that array, I wanted to generate it through code. So what I ended up doing was doing this right here. So um, this is the dirt piles. Yeah, array. So it's defined up here, game object dirt piles. Um, and I wanted to, I'm going to just get that serialized field out because I don't want to serialize it anymore and I'm going to cut it and put it below my serialized field fields because I'm particular <laughs> I like to have my serialized fields on the top um, with any public variables and then have my um, private variables below and this is all just at the top of my class and this class is the grave spawner class okay so dirt, pile, dirt piles, rather than being generated through serialized field, is now being generated with find game objects with tag grave. Um, I think this is a pretty expensive call to be making. I think any of these finds calls um, are a little bit um, heavy um, to be making. There's probably, or there's definitely going to be a better way to do this, but this is what I'm doing for now. And then I've just got a print statement here to say um, there are this many dirt piles and then the dirt piles um, dot length. I like to tack a string statement. Anytime I um, print or debug log a variable, I like to tack a string statement onto the front of it um, just so that I remember exactly what I'm testing for because sometimes you end up with like a million different variables in the console and you're like, I don't know which one, which one is which. Um, okay. So the problem with this is that it was generating since all of the, the um, white squares had the grave tag, it was generating graves for everything um, like a million times. <laughs> um, so that wasn't good. So I did, I'm trying to figure out exactly what I did here. I think I was, I think I, so I divided, um, that makes sense, the different quadrants up. And then I had made a serialized field um, with an integer for each quadrant. So the quadrants will correspond to the um, canvases, I believe. So canvas number one, the grave spawn points is quadrant zero. Um, grave spawn points, yep, yeah, in Canvas one is also called quadrant run. So that's over here in the serialized field. The grave spawn points is where the grave spawner script is sitting. Okay, so canvas number two, grave spawner um, is quadrant number two. Canvas number three, grave spawner is quadrant three. Okay, so that makes sense. Um, and then, and like I said, this is like, super overcomplicated. 
not a good way to do this, but I just like to screw around and see what I can come up with. Um, okay, so for each quadrant, I'm gonna have a different tag, which means that um, Yeah, okay. So these are the actual dirt piles and I just wanna take a look at my dirt pile prefab. So over in my prefabs, here's my dirt pile. So, um, this is what I believe is controlling um, the image for the dirt pile. So if I crank this A value down, yep, they disappear. What are these little white things? Oh, I think those are just little markers. Let me see. What is that thing? I don't know what that is. Okay, I might have to deal with that later. For now, one thing at a time, I'm gonna crank that value back up. Oh, and I'm, it's because I, I'm not, I don't think I'm on the prefab, am I? There we go. Okay, so that's a mistake that I make all the time. So if, even though all of these are instances, um, of the prefab um, when I made that change to the color because I had just one uh, selected, it didn't change all of the prefabs. Um, I would have had to go up to here in the inspector and hit apply all, um, which I'm not gonna do right now because I feel like something else is going on with my prefab and I wanna make sure it's not gonna screw everything up. Um, just wondering though if I, I'm, if I need to do it this way. Like it seems really complicated to me. I'm gonna go back over into my code and see exactly what I didn't like about this way that I was doing it. So, find objects with tag graves. And then there are this many graves. I'm gonna just, um, comment out the switch statement. I just want to replicate the behavior from my last stream to see exactly what the problem was. And hopefully this will actually play because I think this should get rid of the error message that I was seeing. Okay, so let's give that a shot. Okay. So it's making a million dirt piles, but at least it is generating the dirt piles. Um, I don't see any error messages. The canvas is no longer black. So that confirms, hopefully, that it was not a camera issue, but that it did have to do um, with the, with the um, way that I was generating the graves. Um, Unity can be tricky like that. Like sometimes you have one thing that's off, like one component that is not even used that often or is not even that important to the scene. But like say you've forgotten to um, drag and drop something into a serialized field and it can like literally break the entire game um, and it can sort of mislead you into believing that something else is wrong. I also have found, um, and I don't know if it's just my imagination, but I found that um, it's in later versions of Unity. So I'm using 2020 right now, and I believe for quite a while I was using 2019, even though it was outdated. Um, and I feel like those um, error messages were not as game breaking as they are in the newer versions of Unity. Um, I mean, that's probably a good thing because it encourages you to go and change them and fix them. Um, but it's also sort of not great because sometimes you're like, oh, this part of the game isn't even that important. Why is it breaking everything? Okay, so going back into the code. And 
Okay, so there are this many dirt piles. So for every dirt pile, generate graves. Oh, of course. Okay, so the problem, I'm silly. The problem is that I have the generate graves um, script in my game four times. Oh, so it's it's running this code four times. So annoying how you don't work on a project for a while, you come back and it takes like the first half an hour to actually figure out what I'm even doing. Um, okay, so I'm thinking that I love the idea of my crazy switch statement, but I am worried that by doing it that way, it's going to be difficult to get the um, text fields that I want um, to show up in the UI. So the UI, like I said, keeps track of the number of graves that currently remain in the scene. Um, and if I have four different spawners, although now I'm thinking, okay, I could just add, you know, take four different um, sums and then add them together and have that cast to the UI. Um, I could do that, but I know that's going to be messy. I'm going to just, yeah, maybe that is the best thing to do though, because this is going to be, oh, I guess it's okay to do it like this. Okay. I guess I got to choose one way. I'm going to try to do it as one, only one grave spawner, because I think, think in the end this will probably be the easiest thing so first what I'm going to do is go through and um, disable the grave spawners on the other canvases I don't like to delete things from the hierarchy if I'm not sure about something I don't want to delete them right away just going to go over and am I, am I actually in unity yes okay so I'm just going to go over to the inspector and disable that Disable the one in Canvas 3. And where's my lovely Canvas 4? Oh no, that is Canvas 4, of course. So I want to just have Canvas 3 disabled and um, Canvas 2 disabled and Canvas 1, which is the second Canvas in the array. Okay, now I'm still going to have dirt piles for each Canvas and they still have the tag grave. So could this actually work? Probably not. Oh, lovely. So once again, that was an instance of something not being hooked up right. And so the whole canvas went black. So I can see I have a lovely um, null reference exception okay so um, I know I don't have Visual Studio up right now I just want to take a look at this on my own for a second Okay, so what's happening here, this is actually sort of interesting, is what actually threw that that um, error is um, over in this pile counter script, um, which I think is the UI. I'm pretty sure this is what is um, getting a hold of the number of um, Piles remaining and then casting that to the UI. Yeah, so piles text dot text piles remaining dot two string. So it is going to go look for the grave spawner and then get dirt piles. Um, so over in grave spawner, I have a getter here at the bottom. Get dirt piles dirt piles dot length. Why do I have two? That seems sort of silly. Um. Yeah, so get dirt piles here, dirt piles dot length. And I'm wondering if it's trying to get a hold of that before um, the dirt piles have actually been 
bonds. Sometimes I've seen that happen before. I'm gonna just um, throw this into, whoops, if I can spell, into an awake method. Now I have my lovely commented out start method. I don't know that this will do anything, but I have seen this happen before where because of the order of execution in Unity, sometimes you do need to have things in an awake method so they run before the start method. Okay, so now, did I freeze Unity? This keeps happening and I don't, I hopefully I saved. So it looks like we're frozen. You can see my little, um, oh yeah, we're frozen. So I can't even, whoa, oh, there we go, okay. So no, it's running a bunch of times again. So you just have to be patient. It's gonna eventually <laughs> exit play mode. I'm gonna come back into the code so that you have something to look at that isn't my screwed up um, game. <laughs> okay, it's, it's out. Okay, so let's go back over to this. So there are this many dirt piles. So let's just comment out the generate graves method. And go back into Unity. And let's just get that total there. Okay, so there are this many dirt piles, 110, which is probably about right. I'm going to assume that's somewhere in the ballpark of being correct. I'm not going to sit here counting them all. So the problem comes when I run the generate graves method. Um, so when I run it, let's reactivate it. So for, um, I equals zero, I, yeah, dirt plus that length. We're gonna instantiate a grave and then generate an item. Okay, like that looks okay to me. I'm still wondering if um, back in Unity, if it's trying to run. Um, is there a way to check I'm just trying to think if there's a way to check um, the number of instances of a class that exists in a scene. Yeah, because I'm still thinking it almost looks like it's running this script a bunch of times. Although I guess it it shouldn't be. Okay, let's just try to run that again. I'm gonna make sure I save because who knows what might happen. So it's doing it again. I'm just not really sure why it's doing this because there it is only finding 110 piles. Okay, rather than have um, an instantiation happen, if I can get this, there are this major piles. Yeah, why is it running this a million times? 
Okay, get out. Okay, so rather than actually have um, the generate graves running, I'm gonna just um, take this for loop and print the name. And hopefully I'm back in Visual Studio. Yeah, I'm going to do something that's less um, intensive and just print the name of the dirt pile. And we're still hanging out. Unity's still trying to figure out what the heck is going on even though I've hit the button to stop it. Um, yeah. So yeah, we just gotta be patient here. Sorry, as we wait for Unity to stop freaking out. So I just wanna make sure that this for loop is running correctly. I know it's getting the right number um, and the length of dirt piles or approximately the right number. And this was working before fine, so I'm not really sure why it's suddenly screwing up. And I might Honestly, just have to close Unity down and restart it because it is just freaking right out. So let's open that back up again. I hope everybody's weekend has been good so far. And we're really running into problems here because I can't reopen Unity because I think it's still trying to work. Um, I'm gonna close down Visual Studio as well, which means we're gonna be on a lovely black screen. Okay, here it comes, I think, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully you're enjoying the music, having a bit of relaxed time. Okay, so I'm getting an error here and I don't think you can see it. Process cannot access the file because it is being used by another process. And I should probably just make sure that um, it's fully out. So for a really long time, um, I was a Linux user. And so I'm still getting used to control alt delete and things again. <laughs> so I'm like, oh yeah, I can do that now. I found in general that Unity, there are definitely bugs, but it's pretty stable. And honestly, this is not my friend right now. So I might actually have to go 
do something else right now because it is really freaking out. You just open another project in Unity and see if it will show that project. Unfortunately, I don't have a, a camera, um, like a window right now to show you the um, screen, the project screen for Unity, but you can have like a bunch of different projects. It's really easy to use. Um, I really like that about it, that it doesn't take a long, a long time to swap between projects. Sometimes I even have like multiple projects open at the same time if I need to um, check how I've hooked something up in one project or another. So I'm gonna have to change my yeah, there we go. Okay. So <laughs> I've swapped to another game and I might actually come back to this game if my, um, if my grave digger game is, isn't cooperating tonight, I might swap back to this game. So this is another game that I was working on. Um, and I'd actually love to have another crack at this one. It was, the idea was that it was going to be sort of like a puzzle 2d scroller game. Um, I really like these graphics that I found um, on, I think I found them on um, Open Game Art, which is a really cool um, free, well, yeah, dang, yeah, I think all the assets are free, free assets for game developers. Um, a lot of this stuff is um, totally like copyright free, so you don't need to do attribution or anything like that. Um, and sometimes you do um, but I mean, that's not a big deal. Just always make sure that you give credit to the artist if you're using um, something that they've made. Um, and they have sound effects and really cool music on there as well. Actually, I've used the music there quite a few times. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is close this down and try to reopen up my last game. I just realized too that I've called it, it should be called Game Jam um, because when I started this uh, game, I didn't know what it was going to be called, but I realized now I've called it Game Jam for some reason. Okay, so it's still not doing it in the last ditch effort. And again, I'm sorry you can't see this. Um, oh, maybe it's doing something now. I was going to say in the last ditch effort, I was going to try to, oh, there it is sort of sucks because now I want to go <laughs> and work on my other game. Maybe I'll do that on the next stream. Um, yeah, last ditch effort was I was going to go into my repo where I have the files for this game saved and delete the library files, which is usually safe um, to delete the library files. Um, if you're using source control, which you really, or version control, which you should be doing, um, you always want to have an ignore on the library um, for Unity because it's so big and it just gets regenerated every time anyway, so it's not really worth backing up. Um, and there's there's lots of instructions online um, for doing that. So if you don't know exactly what I'm talking about, then look it up. But just make sure that you do have some sort of backup. Um, I use uh, Source Tree and then I back that up to uh, a repo on GitHub. And that's pretty standard. Okay, so now I can't even remember what we were doing in here. Okay, so let's go. I think we're going to the code and I'm gonna have to re jig this window. Um, oh, I don't think I have a script open. Let's open up a script. There we are, lovely. So a good lesson in how to not panic if Unity goes awry. It's just what happens. If you have a good backup system, you don't have much to worry about. Okay, so that's right. What we're doing right now is we're gonna just print the names of the dirt piles and I want to double check that that generate graves. Um, 
method is not being called. All right, let's see what happens. So nothing's actually gonna happen on the screen because I'm not calling the generate graves. But yeah, okay, so everything is being called a million times. Dirt pile six is being called 12 times. Eight is being called 44 times. Okay, you know what I'm gonna do is go into my canvas. I just don't understand because this was really working beforehand and now it's just not. And I'm going to, nope, not my UI bar. I'm going to just turn off the grave spawn points that I'm, that are for the other canvases. Like that. So now we're back to just this one happy canvas. Just this one. And you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to just, oh my gosh, duplicate my rows. Oh no, that's just, no, 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 bad. <laughs> that was silly. So I was duplicating the piles, not the rows themselves. So that's why we have this funny pile hanging out over there. Okay, so let's duplicate the rows, throw them up here. Okay, and then I'm just gonna keep duplicating. My hierarchy is looking super cluttered and awful. Um, but for testing, for figuring stuff out, don't worry too much about positioning. This has happened a million times to me where I've spent like all afternoon tweaking the positioning of something and then realized the next morning, oh my gosh, I have to completely like rewrite the script. And so all of that work was for nothing. You want to get enough of a sense of um, the position of things and how things are going to work. Um, like you want to be particular enough that um, you get things in position enough to, conf to be able to confirm that it's going to work properly, but don't fuss over things uh, for sure. Okay, so now we got a million rows that are named funny things like row one, eight and stuff. <laughs> so I will definitely go back and change those names. And once again, the camera is just positioned on this bottom left quadrant here. So that's why you're only seeing that here on the play screen or on the game screen, game window, I should say. Yeah, if you don't know, um, if you're new to Unity, um, the this is the scene view, the scene window over here on the left, and this is the game window over on the right. Um, so you can't actually edit anything in the game window, which makes sense. You do the editing in the scene window um, all the time I make that mistake where I'm like clicking stuff on the, on the game window being like, why, why can't I select things? Um, but yeah. And if you don't like how, um, the default setup for Unity, you can change the windows around. So see, I'm dragging the game window. I can like put it up here, put it down. Oh, I thought it was going to go down into like a little quarter down there, but it's just popped over here. Um, yeah, so that's something I really like about Unity is that you can dock things to different positions. Okay, and now I'm going to play this. Okay, so now there are 90 dirt piles. And yeah, all the dirt piles are, they do share names. So I think it would make sense that they are generating um, the same name multiple times. I don't think that's a problem. Um, just hang out in Unity for a second there. I'm just back in Visual Studio for one second. You 
can hear my clicky keyboard. So I'm sorry if it's too loud. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like pretty aggressive. Okay, I'm getting an error somewhere in my code. Sorry, I'm just putting the generate graves um, method back in here to call in awake. But I'm getting an error and I'm not sure where. Okay, here I'll bring you back over in here. So I'm actually wondering if what I should do is be, be doing the um, the loop in awake and then calling the generate graves, but then it's giving me the error down here that, um, oh, I don't know, I don't think you can see this because it's bringing up another window, that the name um, I does not exist in the current context. And so what's happening is, yeah, I couldn't see the little squiggly under the I there. Um, Hold on one second, just make sure. Yeah, you can see that. Okay, so um, because initially I had the for loop in this generate graves method, um, it knew what the I was. So what I'm gonna have to do is pass that in. So I'm gonna pass in, I guess it's a game object. Whoops. Hope you can see this. Or no, I, I don't define that there, sorry. So it's gonna be dirt pile I. Can I do that? Generate graves, dirt pile I. And then down at generate graves, I need to define what type I'm passing in. Yeah, so it's coming over. Dirt Pile's eye is coming over. Oh, okay, yeah. So I'm gonna call this pile, and then I'm gonna change this to pile, because that's what's actually being, what's coming over. Hopefully that takes care of it, yeah. There's always this like 10 seconds when you think you've changed the code correctly, but then the red squiggly line hasn't disappeared yet. Um, I don't know if my computer is just getting slower, but I feel like it used to um, render a lot faster than that. So like there wasn't that 10 second, but sometimes I'm like, oh, I think that's, I think that's right though. Why are you still giving me a red squiggly line? And then it does disappear. I just had to wait like another half a second. Okay, so now let's see what it's gonna do. We'll go back over into Unity. Oh my gosh, did it actually work? <gasps> that would be exciting. So let's double check. By the way, I don't even know if there's anyone watching tonight, but if you are, hi, drop me a hello in the chat so I know you're there. It's nice to have you here. Okay, so let's um, double check. So we'll go into our grave spawn points, we'll go into each row, and then let's make sure that um, each dirt pile only has one grave. Okay, so this is, I need to rename some of these prefabs because the, the dirt pile is actually the white square and the grave is actually the thing that looks like a dirt pile. Um, once again, this was a time limited game jam, so I was like going really fast. Um, but this is part of the reason I wanna go back through this and clean it up. But it does look like each um, white square now only has one dirt pile on it. So hopefully that took care of it. Definitely gonna save that. Now the next thing to check. Is 
is whether or not the UI is actually casting the right number of um, dirt piles to it. And it's not casting anything right now, so that's interesting. Probably, it's probably not hooked up right, um, I'm gonna assume. And now I see the benefit of having four, four different generators because if I want the UI to only say um, the amount of graves that are in this quadrant, I guess what I can do is make sure that each quadrant has the same number of um, of graves in it and then maybe divide it by four so that way it's still showing the correct value at the top. For now, I'm gonna go in and um, rename some of my stuff here because it's bothering me. So these are the grave spawn points um, one it's saying, so I'm gonna call that. Yeah, grave. I didn't need to delete that whole thing. Okay, grave spawn points. So this is row one. One, two, three, four, seven. Okay, let's. So this is row two. So one, two, three, four, seven, nine. So let's just, and technically this is wrong because the first dirt pile, you know what? Let's just do it the right way because that's gonna bother me. And then I'm gonna come back and wanna change it. So it should be dirt pile, just dirt pile. Then dirt pile one. Then dirt pile two. Then dirt pile three. Oh, you know this is gonna take forever. Let's just do the rows. One, two, three, four, row five. And the reason why I'm not gonna do that right now is because um, that's what I was talking about a few minutes ago is being too finicky when it might not, it might be something I need to change. If I knew it was something that was going to stay exactly the same way for all time, then I would make the effort to do it. But I'm still suspicious that I'm going to have to make some changes to the prefab. And in that case, I, it might end up screwing up the name as well. So these um, rows are not prefabs. And you can tell that because they are not blue. Um, so prefabs are really... Um, easy way to have to store sort of like a template for a game object in unity um but um the prefabs um all share the same characteristics if that makes any sense so if you name a prefab one thing um it might like end up renaming everything or if you rename an element that's childed to a prefab it might end up renaming everything else depending on whether or not you click the right button but these rows are white in the hierarchy their names are, are white they are not prefabs although honestly probably wouldn't be a bad idea to prefab these 15 row 16 row 17 okay so now we want to get the correct number of graves um, being printed to the UI, which is how the game originally worked. Just after that last change, I'm just going to do a play again to make sure that we're not getting a crazy loopy loop thing again. Nope. Okay. looks good. That's also interesting because it's making me lose the game really quickly there, and now I'm I'm wondering why. Um, I'm just not gonna. Well, I feel like I should be worrying about that because I'm not really sure why it's doing that. I wonder if it's registering more clicks or something. Let's just try that again. Okay, so, oh, I think it's, okay. So I think what the problem is, is that 
Um, the way the game knows um, whether or not you've won is um, it takes this value that's printed up here to the UI. So it might think that um, the value is such that I've won the game, which is what we're trying to fix right now. So this is the UI bar. Um, Oh gosh, so this is a script that I haven't looked at in a long time. This is gonna be fun. So it's called Level Loader. I can see right off the top that I've got way too many scripts here. So let's go back into this mess of a script. Um, and you know what, I think I don't think it was there, was it? I think it was in Pile Counter. So we need to, yeah, the get number of piles, generate Pile Counter, piles remaining is this, and two string. So let's just print here the piles remaining. Um, there are, um, what is it, treasure piles? Probably should be using a debug log, but I'm using a print. It's faster to type. And I'm getting this curious little 41 showing up in my um, in my console. And this is what I talk about. Um, if you have time, um, actually adding a string onto when you're uh, printing a, a variable to the console, add a string onto the front of it or the back of it or whatever so that you know what you're testing. Although, um, if you don't already know this, um, you can always double click the things in the console and they'll take you to uh, the script where it resides. So I don't think you can see this right now, but it's just printing um, the number of particle systems that are generated. That's what that 41 refers to. But once again, I like to have the string in the console just so that I have it right in front of me. Okay. so. There are 90 piles rema remaining, is what it's saying. So there are this many dirt piles, 90, um, and there are 90 piles remaining. That is correct, that is good. And stupid thing I didn't do was have that update. So sorry, I'm back in, um, I'm back in the pile counter script. I'm just gonna throw that print statement that I had just written for one of the methods. I'm gonna put that on update so that it actually updates it. So anytime you're um, debugging um, dynamic things, so like movement, um, the rotation of an object, that sort of thing, um, you wanna put that in update, um, so that way you can actually see how things are changing over time. Okay, so it went from there are this many dirt piles 90 to there are zero piles remaining. So that's interesting. So it's like you do one dirt pile and you win the game. Cool game, right? So let's go back in and figure out what the heck is going on. Yeah, heck of a big click for sure. So this is where it's incre um, yeah, increasing the number of piles. So we know that that's correct. It's generating the correct number of piles at the start of the game. So that's fine. So I think the problem might actually be over in Grave. So I've got the Grave Spawner class and then I've got a class called Grave. 
which is handling what happens when the player clicks. So we've got dig grave, um, reveal item, so um, this is increasing the fear status and reveal item treasure. Yeah, okay, so I don't look like I'm decreasing anything there. Let's go back over into pile counter. Generate pile counter. Where is that method actually coming from? Okay, find objects of type pile counter, find treasure. So piles remaining Um, let's put a print statement in here. Just gonna say like running this method. I just wanna check how many times this method is being run. Honestly, this is a case where this would probably be so much easier to do if I was had restarted the game, had restarted making the game, because now I'm taking a game that was not built this way and trying to convert it to another way. Um, honestly, it might save me time to just like restart the thing from scratch, but I'm stubborn and want to see if I can do it. So running this method only happens once, which is correct. We only want it to happen once, although it only needs to happen once in order to trigger the win condition. So let's see. Um, I'm just going to go back out and comment out the condition, the win condition here. So that way we don't suddenly trigger the win condition and um, not see what's actually happening when we're calling the method, how many times it's being called, if that makes any sense. Okay, so now because I have disabled the wing condition, it is actually working. It's letting me click the graves. But, oh no, that's right, you are cursed. Okay, I should be cursed. I've clicked, I've clicked three bad graves. I'm clicking play again, and um, the way I have the level loader, which is what is um, resetting the game, it's not hooked up correctly, that's okay. We'll, we'll deal with that later. It does seem though like it is still going in one click from 90 to zero even though it's only running that method once. So I'm not sure how it's getting there so quickly. This many dirt piles and there are zero piles remaining. Whoa, so right off the bat it's saying there are zero piles. Okay, so now I'm wondering if what's happening is if it is, so I'm seeing, I'm just trying to trace back where I'm actually calling generate pile counter, which is what um, like casts the number of piles that exist in the scene right at the start of the game. And I'm almost wondering if I'm, it shouldn't 
matter. I was gonna say if I'm doing that too early, just out of curiosity, I'm gonna throw this method back into start method instead of awake. Um, And I don't think this is going to do anything, but I would just rather have it in start method anyway. Okay, so same thing, there are zero piles remaining. So we're going down here. We are um, generating the number of piles. So this is basically what is, um, so when the piles are generated, when the grays are generated, um, the item that they contain, so either like the bad item or the good item, so I'm calling that junk or treasure, is also being generated and then if it is a treasure pile, so that the piles that you, the player, um, as a player you want to click, it's increasing the number of piles. So let's print this number of piles variable here. And forgive me if I'm not in Visual Studio. Oh, and I don't think you can see actually where I did that. Um, but down here, I'm just throwing a print statement there. So that's when a treasure pile, a good pile is generated. Let's see how many times that's running. Generating a pile 44. That's probably about right. That's just about half, right, of 90. Yeah, so um, that should be okay. So I think that's generating correctly. So now I'm wondering if it's coming over correctly to the other scripts because I'm sending that variable over here. So pile counter, generate pile counter, number of piles. So I'm sending that over to the pile counter. And let's just dump this print statement in the start method, because I'm actually interested to see what the pile counter is saying um, the number of piles is right at the start of the game. Yeah, there are zero piles remaining. So there are this many dirt piles, 90. And there are zero piles remaining in the other script. So somewhere there's a disconnect. Generate pile counter, float piles. Just trying to see if this, if there's something to do, my, my, Inkling is that it has something to do with the order of execution. Um, so one script might be trying to access a variable before that variable has completed updating in another script. So I'm just sort of swapping around the position of that print statement. Okay, so this is a little bit different now. I'm getting a little bit of a different result. <laughs> um, so now um, I am, now it is saying that there are, this many dirt piles, 90, and 90 piles remaining. But 
I want to also put this debug statement in the find treasure method. So that's where, um, where we should see the decrease in the number of piles. It's a lot of pile counting. Sometimes I call them graves, sometimes I call them piles. I need to uh, standardize my vocabulary here, or my terminology, I think, a little bit. Okay, so there are this many deer piles, 90. You're generating a pile 42 times, so generating a treasure 42 times. I can't remember um, how I have the random factor set there, but there's um, somewhere in my code, there's a formula where um, a certain number are being of the piles are being assigned as junk and a certain number are being assigned as uh, treasure. There are 90 piles remaining. And so if we click a pile, Yep, so once again, it's going right from 90 to zero. I'm also curious, it's going right to zero. It's not going below zero or anything. And it's only running that find treasure method once. So I was worried that one click, because sometimes you can get that issue in Unity where one click registers like a bunch of times. Um, so it can keep like running a method a bunch of times. Yeah, is the value being set to zero or null rather than being decremented? Um, no, so over here in the code, it's just um, being decreased here. So piles remaining is being decreased. And this is what, so the find treasure is being called over in the grave scripts. So here, find object of type, find treasure. I'm gonna just, I just keep running um, print statements basically on everything. I just want to see how many times each of the methods is being run. So when we reveal an item, calling reveal item, yep, it's only doing that once. Now that was just, that was a bad pile. Calling reveal item two calling reveal item three. So it's only being called three times and yet it's jumping right to zero piles remaining. So again, I wanted to be sure that it's not registering like a ton of clicks and that's what's suddenly pushing that number down to zero. So we know that this is only being run once. So it's only running this method um, which is the find treasure method over in pile counter. It's only running that once. Also wondering if I have um, pile counter more than once in my scene, which is possible. So initially, pile counter was living on all of the uh, different canvases, but I have, I've disabled it. So I don't think it should be running more than once. Just gonna go into the pile counter script and print a debug statement um, this dot name so it's gonna print should print a name for every time the pile counter script starts so yeah just one time there 
so it should only be happening one time on the so it's attached to the piles remaining which is here in the hierarchy okay here's an issue here's something that's curious is that the um, in the piles are uh, on the piles remaining object which is where the pile counter script is the piles remaining is zero here And I just want to double check that that's actually getting set to what it is. Um, so this is why I don't like dealing with public floats, um, which means that they are can be edited in the inspector. Sometimes you have to have them because you need to change a variable from another script. So the piles remaining is not being changed there. So that might be what the problem is. Just gonna go into my um, code and I just changed the piles remaining to a private as opposed to a public um, it will definitely throw an error but I want to know where that error is and maybe I can find a way around it oh it's not throwing an error that's curious Ninety piles remaining. Okay, yep, that's right. There are zero piles remaining. Okay, so I thought that might help. And I'm wondering though if there's another instance of this variable that's also public. Does that make sense? Something is not talking to each other the right way. So grave, find treasure. Revealed item treasure, yeah. And there are suddenly zero piles remaining. I mean, maybe from my um, from my grave script, I can um, decrease the piles remaining here, which is gonna require me to <laughs> make that pile counter or piles remaining variable back into a public float. But, oh well, for now. So, um, and what I should do is save, actually I think I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna save a reference to the pile counter up in the start method. I'm surprised I don't actually have one up here. So I'm gonna do, whoops, find object of type up here. So pile counter equals find object of type, pile counter, so that way I have a save reference to that. So I'm going to jump down here. So now I can just change this and hopefully I'll just go back into um, my program here so I can make sure that you can see. Okay, so there we go. Oh, hi, somebody new in the stream. Nice to see you. Okay, so now we're going to decrease. piles remaining and I'm just not even going to call um, I'm not even going to call this find treasure method right now I'm just going to say pile counter piles remaining like that and then I'm going to print I think somewhere I am getting a hold of um like the wrong I'm getting a hold of the variable at the wrong time so it's not up it's not being updated when I get a hold of it if that makes any sense I 
and I'll bring you back over to Unity. Okay, so now there are zero piles remaining again. What in the heck? I'm tempted to just pull everything over from the script um, and see if I can just get it to print. I'm gonna just debug everything here. So I wanna make sure that nothing is being, um, is being printed from the script. I see too I have this add pile method, which I don't think I'm actually Oh, that's if I'm adding a pile back, which is part of the enemy system, like the AI enemy system that I have built in, which we haven't even dealt with this time. So again, I wanna make sure that I'm not printing any confusing statements from this pile counter class, just to make sure I wanna be printing everything from the grave script this time. And I think these lovely negative numbers here are the number of piles remaining. Yeah. So now we're, we're not even getting zero. We're getting negative. Okay, so it's definitely something to do with how these two um, classes are talking to each other. Let's print a reference to um, the piles remaining right up at the top to make sure that we are actually getting what we want. And I bet it's gonna say zero. And I, again, it might be screwing up here because I have it, oh, I don't even think I was in Visual Studio that time, but I just moved one of the debug statements up to the start method. Yeah, and it's saying zero, which is what I thought it would do. So right off the bat, it's thinking that the piles remaining is zero. Just gonna take that public and make the piles remaining, oh, which I can't do because I was gonna say I'm gonna make it private, but I can't do that right now because I need to access it from another script. And that's why I'm getting this error right now as I'm trying to play. So you can see down here, um, it's inaccessible due to its protection level. So that basically means that I'm trying to act, or in this case, I'm trying to access a variable um, that needs to be public, but I have it set to private. So I was hoping I would be able to fix this on stream tonight, but I think I'm gonna have to end soon. Um, unfortunately, I can only stream for about 90 minutes at a time. Um, shoot, I really, I'm sure there's something really silly that I'm missing here. gonna do like two more minutes one more pass over over my code here so revealing the item so these squiggly lines that I'm getting down here are because I'm trying to access like I said the variable that is um, is private I think it sort of needs to be private I would rather it be private Okay, so then if I just take that out, I'm gonna call find treasure and then I'm going to save my script. 
and then find treasure. I'm gonna change this debug test a little or text a little bit. So I found a treasure. There are this many piles remaining. And I'm gonna do that. Hopefully I'm getting a hold. So I have that reference to the other script and hopefully I'm getting a hold of it at the correct time. Um, like I said, sometimes you're getting a hold of it before it can actually set the, the, um, the flow value to what you need it to be. And that weird black <laughs> coming in there, um, fading out is that fader, which I don't have positioned correctly. So we revealed the item. That was another junk pile. And found a treasure, there are zero piles remaining. So the same thing is happening. Okay, this is a really cool, this excites me when I have a cool problem like this to solve. Um, but I'm gonna have to wait for my next stream. Um, I'm a mom and my kids need to get to bed. Um, and they're, I'm sure they're waiting for me right now. So I'm gonna have to leave it there. I think we're just getting a couple more people on the stream. So I'm sorry that I'm ending right now, um, but I, sh I will be streaming again on Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time. And I'm looking forward to trying to figure out what this problem is. Um, once again, um, in the absolute worst case, I might have to just go in and quickly regenerate the play space, um, which again, I'll do on stream. It might just be easier than trying to figure out code that I wrote uh, months ago that honestly probably um, is bad. <laughs> and I know more now than I did. Um, yeah, hi, I'm sorry that you just got here and I'm leaving. Um, I'd like to stream earlier at night, but like I said, I, I can't really do it <laughs> with my schedule, um, but maybe in the future I will. I know it's a little bit early, um, especially if you're in a different time zone. Um, so yeah, so next time I'll be coming in and I'll try to uh, figure out what the problem is here and I might end up having to rewrite a class, um, which is always a good practice. Um, I try not to get too frustrated when something doesn't go right because of course it's an opportunity for me to learn how to code better and um, that's the way you get better at coding, right? Is to, is to keep practicing. So thank you guys so much for joining in on my stream tonight. Um, I had a lot of fun. This is like I said at the beginning of the stream that this is my relaxation time um, where I'm not working on any sort of deadline, which I sometimes am when I'm working with Unity and I can just sort of take the, the long way around and explore different options when I'm on the stream. So thank you for being patient with me and letting me just play around a little bit. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess I'll see you on the uh, next stream. Thank you guys so much for coming. I'll see you next time.